So, the next uh, thing I wanted to talk about with you is the suppression of your desires as a parent. Do you know what I mean by that? Every single time that you suppress a desire in yourself, you're also teaching your child to suppress a desire within themselves. So let's get to uh, some of the desires that are really tricky desires in terms of most of us have some shame or guilt about, and that is our sexual desires. Every single time you suppress your sexual desires within yourself, you're also suppressing the sexuality of your child. Now, how many of us feel like we've got some major issues regarding sexuality in our lives? How many of you feel that, like, like, like I've had lots to deal with uh, through mine? And every single time we don't deal with those emotions and we actually suppress the desires that we have, we're influencing our child to do very, very similar things. What's the opposite of suppress, though? It's not actually to enact the desires either, is it? No, no, it's a matter of feeling them. So, it's a matter of feeling the desires that you have. Some of the desires will be out of harmony with divine love. Some of them will be out of harmony with God's laws. But you still need to feel them. And you need to feel them to release them, to work on them, and you need to feel them. So, let's just give some examples. Um, Let's say uh, there's, a, there's three or four children in the family and uh, three of them are teenage girls now. There's the father and the mother. And the teenage girls are used to uh, nudity when they were young and so they're still roaming through the house naked and they're in their teens. And so dad sees them naked and he tells them, go and put clothes on. How does that sound to you? What comments do you want to make about Lisa? No. So, sorry, Lisa. Sorry, yes. Um, it's like making them feel ashamed of just being naked. Yes, it is making them feel ashamed. Now, what must be going through the father to actually request that of them, do you think? What do you reckon, maybe? He's obviously feeling something for them sexually, so he doesn't want to deal with that. Exactly, exactly. Otherwise, he would not be uh, worried about it, would he? If he wasn't worried about it when they were five or ten, why would he be worried about it at fifteen? Right. Please. And what about the father walking around naked in front of the girls? Well, if he's done it all their life, why wouldn't he do it still? Like, in the end, God didn't design us with clothes on. <laughs> he designed us without clothes on. In our family, we all used to walk around naked, but every time I noticed with the kids, as soon as they got to their teens, they would be asking Mum and Dad to put their clothes on. Actually, that's true. Yes. Why would that be? What are the feelings that Mum and Dad have about their own bodies? If, if the child is reflecting shame back, of, a, of a body back to the parent, what does the parent feel about their own body? Shame. Right, so you must have some shame about your own body. And you know you do. <laughs> Does that make sense? And all they're doing is reflecting that back to you. That's all they're doing. So, uh, so I'm not suggesting you all need to now go strip off and be naked around everybody. What I'm saying is that if our behaviour changes due to age differences or whatever, we need to seriously look at the underlying emotions as parents. If our children's behaviour changes, like, throughout any period of our lives, we need to look at our behaviour as parents. Our children are our law of attraction. Right? So what they are actually doing with us and saying to us and interacting with us with are, it is the proof of what's within our soul, whether we want to believe it or not. It's there. And we need to allow ourselves to see it. Since, I've been, since my daughter was young, she's always buttoned me up and told me to put my clothes on. And, and I'm just wondering, is that because I'm in such denial, because I don't feel that way? Yes. Yeah, so you're in denial of an emotion that you actually do feel inside of yourself, but you've intellectually skipped over it. 
We often do this as parents. What we do is we intellectually skip over the emotion, thinking we don't have it or thinking we've accepted some new thought, when in reality we haven't dealt with the issue emotionally. And our children will perfectly reflect back to us the fact that we haven't dealt with the issue emotionally. Yeah. So whenever a child does that with you, perfect thing. Straight away, obviously I haven't dealt with this. Now, often what we want to do with parents is to say, oh, I've dealt with it, I've dealt with it, it must be the child, it must be something wrong with the child. No, no, it's actually still going on in you and you've just suppressed it. Really important to see that. Any other comments about that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can see that with my oldest daughter. It sounds similar to this lady's daughter. Yeah. Um, like growing up and changing, and she's really not confident in it, and just wanting to cover up and telling me all the time, put some clothes on, or go get dressed, and you know. And I know that that's how I felt as a child, and she's showing it to me all the time. Yeah, it's how you still feel. Actually. It is. But yeah. I still have a lot of it, but yeah, yeah. just not wanting to deal with it. Even though yeah. I know here that that's, I hate it. I hate it. You know, everything that's it. changing. Yeah. It's just so obvious. Yeah. yeah. Issues of sexuality are very important to deal with as parents because they control how our children eventually grow up and how they interrelate with the opposite sex. And they control even the quality of the relationships they have with the opposite sex. So they're very, very important emotions to deal with. And when we have the sex and sexuality discussion, we confront a lot of those emotions that you may feel within you. The, um, the thing is with the children, is like how many of you, if, if you walked up and saw two children playing with each other's private parts, and even just calling them private parts is interesting, but they're playing with each other's private parts and it's all in public, how would you respond? Just be honest, how would you respond? How have you responded when you found this happening with your own children? Jen? When my kids were little, yes, I would have said, oh, you know, don't do that now. But now, uh, with the grandchildren, I can see that that was something that I suppressed in them that was coming from me yeah. because of my problems with my sexuality. Exactly. So I am changing that yeah. through my grandchildren and yeah. hopefully it'll get better. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when your children were children, you were, uh, you were feeling like shutting them down straight away. Yeah. How many of you have done it? Oh, it's okay to do that. Or how many of you have said it's okay to do it? But oftentimes we say it even, but what are we feeling? Like we're saying, oh, it's okay. And even inside we're going, don't do that, don't do that, in front of people, right? Inside there's a feeling that's totally different. Do you agree? That's often what's happening inside of us. Now, now when we have that feeling, that is the suppression. Here's our pal Jeremy, he's come up to join us. He's decided that he, what he wants to do is that he wanted to draw everyone a bit of the pictures, didn't you? Yeah, I think that's what it is. But we just we talked about this during the break. And we, so he's got his scissors. So some of you will be getting little cutouts, just like we got. Yeah. So the key with all of the key with all of our interactions with children sexually is we need to make sure, obviously, that our desires sexually are pure. If there is any projection whatsoever on our children, that's going to change things totally. A lot of the projections are of shame. So you know how you feel shame about your own body, for example, or shame about sex, or you know if your children come in and in, in on you when you're making love, how do you feel? Like there's this great big shame, huge, huge uh, reaction to cover up, and uh, sometimes we may even yell at the child, get out, get out, what are you doing? Whatever, you know. Now all of those emotions are being projected at the child. What, are the, what is the child learning? They're learning to shut down sexuality, sex is bad. Speaker. Speaker. <laughs> be very private and secret about sex. That's what they would learn. Yeah. <laughs> so you've learned that. Yes, I yeah. have. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I'm not being vocal in this discussion. <laughs> Yeah. So that doesn't mean that you would be, um, what do you call it, um, promiscuous or when you, when you show off, is it exhibitions? 
Um, so we're not, I'm not suggesting that, because that's driven by a desire for other types of attention, isn't it? That's driven by a desire to be loved, a desire to be wanted, a desire to be thought of as fantastic, and all those other things which are also in, in disharmony with love. So the key is to focus on what am I feeling inside of myself emotionally with regard to sexuality? Because whatever you're not feeling inside of yourself is what your child is actually feeling. And shame, like shame about our sexual organs or the way we look as a woman or a man. That's definitely something that gets passed on to children non-verbally. Like, yeah. yeah. Oftentimes a child will have some kind of problems with their sexual organs. Like lately I've had a fair few uh, mothers talk to me about how their daughters' vaginas are all swollen and, and sore all the time. And, and sometimes their daughters have thrush or cystitis, but they're not having sex or anything. They're only seven or eight years of age. And things like that, what's going on? And what's going on is that they're acting out, their body is acting out all of the mother's shame about her own sexual organs and things that have happened in her own life. And usually to do with abusive issues uh, surrounding sex as well. That's what's actually going on. So look really seriously at those issues uh, with regard to sexuality and how those things are being projected at the child. Because when you don't own it, the child experiences it. So remember, every emotion you deny, the child will act out and experience, right down to the physical response. Every single emotion. That's pretty powerful, isn't it, to, to understand? 